2020, we've seen new spikes of conflict in places that were previously more peaceful. We've seen that obviously recently in Nagorno-Karabakh. We've seen it in northern Mozambique. We've seen it in the Western Sahara. And at the moment, obviously, tragically, we're seeing it in northern Ethiopia. Well, Matthew Saltmarsh is a senior external relations officer at the UN Refugee Agency. Matthew, good to have you with us. I mean, the figures are so grim. You're expecting hundreds of millions more refugees next year. If you don't get the money you need to look after these people, what's going to happen? Well, the consequences we think will be absolutely dire if the funding isn't obtained. Um, COVID, of course, is in itself a massive health crisis. But in addition to that, it puts uh, decades of development progress at risk. Because in addition to the virus, of course, there's the socioeconomic impact. So there's uh, a deep recession, uh, prices have been rising, remittances have been falling, and precarity is, is on the increase. In addition to that, Schools have been closed. We know that 1.6 billion children have missed classes as a result of COVID. Um, there's been an increase in gender-based violence. There's been interruptions in vaccination programs. So all of that taken together represents a huge medium-term risk. And of course, there's a very thin line between progress, which we've seen in recent years and recent decades in, in terms of development, uh, and potential devastation. Uh, we also know that uh, when people are forced to move from their homes, they end up in overcrowded camps or detention centres, and often they're trying to get to countries that don't really want to have them. I mean, what, what is going to happen to, to all these people? Because the, the system is already creaking at the seams. Oh, that's right. I mean, if you look at the global forcibly displaced population, it's at around 80 million right now. That includes refugees and internally displaced people. Um, so, and, and it, in addition to that, of course, we know that there's a, a multitude of conflicts. There's obviously protracted existing conflicts, for example, in places like South Sudan and Afghanistan. But we've also seen new conflicts. Uh, we've seen upticks in violence in regions like the Sahel recently, uh, but also most recently in Ethiopia. Um, and of course, as you mentioned, it, it's very difficult for people to move. Um, the numbers that can actually uh, get resettlement are very limited. Uh, so in the first instance, our focus is on trying to support those people who are in a current country of asylum uh, and to do the best that we can for them while they're there. How much harder is your job made by the fact that uh, there is still very little consensus and agreement between countries, particularly European countries, on what to do with uh, refugees and asylum seekers? Because we've had reports of, of EU member states trying to uh, push refugees back from their borders, back into international waters or into other countries. I mean, uh, how, how much more difficult does that make the situation regarding refugees? It does make the situation very difficult. Uh, I think it's fair to say there's been a lack of solidarity uh, in Europe and in some other parts of the world uh, and, and a lack of burden sharing. I think what's needed is, is for international countries to come together uh, to try to support the international community, the United Nations, first of all, to provide this much needed humanitarian aid uh, in the low income countries and, uh, and the developing countries uh, but then also to try to come up with solutions uh, to helping uh, asylum seekers who arrive in places like Europe, for example, uh, by relocating them to different countries around the region. Matthew, thank you. Matthew Saltmarsh there. Thank you.